uh, a time when we recognize and offer a blessing to our graduates and folks who are finishing programs. And um, I have a beat on a few of those uh, folks. Um, and I know the, that many of you are in the thick of it, even if you're not finishing right now. Um, and that's really hard and weird to be doing that from distance. And uh, for those finishing programs, really sad uh, to not be with your um, colleagues and cohort and uh, professors uh, in person. And so um, we'd love to uh, offer a blessing in coming weeks with that. So if you would, um, you can put it in the chat section, like, hey, I'm finishing X program, or uh, my child is finishing this landmark grade. Um, uh, or you can send that to uh, me or to Christian uh, so that we can make sure that we recognize you with uh, by name and with a gift. Um, so we really appreciate that. So I invite you all to join me in our call to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. Joyful is the sound we make this morning, for Christ being raised liberates us from doubt and fear. Thankful is the song we sing, for Christ being raised moves us past darkness and despair. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Christ lives here and now. He is among us at this and every moment. May his peace and presence be known to you and also to you. Let us greet one another with expressions of Christian love. And in an effort to, uh, to be more interactive in this, um, uh, now is a good time to offer a sign of Christ's peace. If you are with someone, give them a hug or a handshake or a high five or a peace sign. Uh, but also I invite you to, to take your cell phone and um, text someone a sign of Christ's peace right now. You, you can just send them a simple text, uh, peace be with you. Maybe they'll know what that means. Maybe it'll be a bizarre thing that gets them out of nowhere and out of context, but uh, take a sec and send someone a sign of Christ's peace. I'm going to invite Katie DeCanto to lead us uh, in a song together. To continue the idea of participation, I think this is a song that most of you probably know. We've done it at church a bunch. It's also pretty repetitive and easy melody, so I encourage you um, to sing along and maybe clap and maybe dance around if you've got kids or if you don't have kids um it's a good time to be proclaiming peace right now as a people of peace in a difficult time <laughs> Joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain. 
mountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. may go off for a prayer for us. Sorry, there is some lightsaber action. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> thank you uh, so much for um, bringing us together this morning for um, all of the families that are uh, together in this way. Thank you that you are with us uh, everywhere, all the time. And I just ask your blessing on the service this morning that, um, that we would notice and feel your presence and that, um, and that we would hear your voice. Amen. Our first reading comes from first Peter one, three through nine. And Selena is going to, uh, read that for us. First Peter three. Oh wait, you said one three through nine. I'm on the wrong part. <laughs> um, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Sorry, my puppy is interactive this morning. <laughs> kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it is perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you, have, though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Uh, we have another peace song. Um, this is one we've done at church before, but um, I think mostly around communion. So I'm going to do the first verse and chorus a couple of times to um, help familiarize everyone with the words and the melody and um, hopefully it'll be more comfortable to sing along. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You are speaking truth to power. You are laying down our swords, replanting every vineyard till a brand new wine is poured. Your peace will make us one. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, your peace will make us one. We'll do that first verse again. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You are speaking truth to power. You are laying down our sword. Replanting every vineyard till a brand new wine is poured. Your peace will make us one. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, 
hallelujah, your peace will make us one. I've seen you in our home fires burning with the quiet light. You are mothering and feeding in the wee hours of the night. Your gentle love is patient. You will never fade or tire. Your peace will make us one. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Your peace will make us one. In the beauty of the lilies, you were born across the sea with the glory in your bosom that is still transfiguring, dismantling our empires till each one of us is free. Your peace will make us one. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Your peace will make us one. Amen. And Sarah Brumeyer will lead us in our responsive song. You can respond with the bold face. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen in me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give up to Sheol or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore.
Amen. At, at this time, um, you can uh, maybe take a sec to gather something from your pantry for communion later, uh, bread, juice, uh, something uh, like that as we, um, after we feast on the word, we'll feast uh, trusting that the Lord will make our tables uh, the Lord's table also. I'll give you a couple a couple minutes to do that. A reading comes from John's Gospel in John 20, and I'll invite one of the Elsies to read for us. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins and they are forgiven, if you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the 12, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands, put your hand into my side. No more disbelief, believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's son, and that believing you will have life in his name. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. Thanks, Ken. So another opportunity for us to interact here. Um, uh, pull up the chat section. And my question, my guiding question for us this morning is, what is your greatest source of unpeace during lockdown? your greatest source of unpeace during lockdown. You can go ahead and type it in. Um, this is fascinating real time uh, collection here. All these things are so real that are popping up. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if any of these very 
unpeaceful thoughts were circulating in the locked room of the disciples following Jesus' death on Calvary. Like, in addition to the really acute post-traumatic stress of losing their friend and mentor in a really gory and public shaming and abrupt death, they also had to be fearful that a similar death might not find them, hence why the door was locked. They had to have an unpeace related to their own physical wellness. Maybe this is a thought that some of y'all are feeling. Beyond that grief and beyond that fear, they had to be experiencing grief and fear related to the death of their expectations and their plans. Not long before Jesus' death, the Zebedee brothers were vying for a place on his right and on his left. Do we remember that story? So there had to be some sort of slow rolling wave of unpeace related to the fact that none of their plans were now going to come true. Maybe you're in the quarantine process where that slow rolling wave is starting to crest and you're feeling all of those canceled plans and it's creating a whole lot of grief. Add on to that on peace was some measure of economic insecurity. Their finances had to be a wreck. Their ability to live was up in the air. After all, the fishermen among them had left their nets to follow this now crucified teacher. You had to think if they went back now, they'd be damaged goods and they're far from the port of Galilee. Maybe this, maybe the unpeace haven't e- hadn't even begun to hit them at how drastically their work was interrupted or would permanently be changed. After all, they'd spent the previous three or so years daily preaching good news to the poor, giving sight to the blind, binding up the broken and delivering the captives, proclaiming jubilee, and now they were huddled in a locked room. All of these things were threatened, not a whole a lot of peace. But in this gospel reading, I think some of the good news of this gospel is that this is the first day of the week. Maybe that's John's sneaky way of inferring that while it probably felt like day 800 of their self-imposed quarantine for fear of religious authorities, it was actually the first day of something new. I think there are echoes of Genesis language that even in lockdown, there might be a good day of new creation coming for them, for us. On this first day, they are met behind closed doors by the risen Jesus and the risen Christ comes bearing peace. He comes to, it says, stand in the middle of them And he speaks three times in this short passage. When anyone says something three times in scripture, it's not magic, but you better pay attention to it because they really mean it. He comes and he says, peace be with you. Jesus is saying the same thing to you and I this morning. Peace be with you. This is simple. But maybe it's all you need to hear today. Peace be with you. Maybe you just need to hear peace be with you in the middle of all of these forces of unpeace that have been spinning around in your head all week. Christ comes offering peace. Ephesians 2 tells us that Christ indeed by the cross has become our peace. In that way, the medium is the message, right? Um, Jesus breaks down the walls of hostility and enters into locked rooms to be our peace. I think this is also a sequel to last week's proclamation at the tomb side when uh, the angel said, Jesus is not here. Don't go looking for him in a dead place where he's being controlled or being predictable. Don't assume that he can't and won't come to you in the place where you are currently isolated. Jesus is entering and standing among us in the middle of lockdown, speaking peace. I've been really surprised just in the last couple of weeks, the ways that I've seen Jesus standing in the middle of us during this time apart. 
uh, mostly small things. I, I've asked uh, Rach a couple of times, like, is spring always this amazing or is it just because I'm paying attention to it now? Like to be able to, to walk the neighborhood and see, actually see these flowers that I normally drive by and don't pay any mind to. I, I see uh, Gerard Manley Hopkins talks about Christ playing in 10,000 places through uh, all of these little um, uh, incursions of beauty around us. Um, I've seen uh, Christ among us just in the interactions across the street with neighbors who n normally keep to themselves. Um, everyone, it, it almost feels like, I grew up in Florida and, and so we did a lot of boating. And when you're boating you uh, and you pass someone, you always wave at them. It's like kind of the sign that everything's okay. And if you don't wave, like you might be being kidnapped or everything might not be okay, right? And so everyone waves and it feels like, like that's what's happening just on our streets. So you pass someone and, and you wave and normally you would have your earbuds in or normally you wouldn't pay any attention. And I think in those interactions and in those surprising interactions, Christ is showing up in our midst. I've seen this as our uh, neighborhood ministry has expanded so much of church life feels like it's contracting, but it's actually expanded on Sunday afternoons uh, when I get to be with people and meet uh, people. And, and last Sunday, I got to use one of, one of my most dreaded technologies, the individual communion K-cup. Uh, we, we got to actually uh, offer Christ's body in blood uh, for uh, some folks from the neighborhood who uh, wanted to celebrate Christ's resurrection. Um, uh, with us even though we're apart. I'm seeing Christ show up in our midst in the sort of creativity that's happening, both in the, in the ways that um, you all are creatively loving each other and uh, even in something like our musicians, the way that, that our time apart has sparked their creativity in our Good Friday music where everyone was passing around files on the internet to create some beautiful synthesis and whole. I'm seeing Christ standing in the middle of us, even during this isolation. There are several responses to meeting this crucified, now risen Jesus. In our passage, the first of those responses was actually joy. I think that's how we'd all like to encounter Jesus. That the disciples were able to experience this first is kind of a feather in their cap, and I think it's a real sign of God's grace to them. Sometimes, even when we're confused, even when we're dejected, God still gives us the ability to experience joy in Christ's presence, maybe even in spite of ourselves. Um, uh, I, I couldn't help but think uh, about this uh, radio show podcast. Uh, many of you know of it called On Being. A couple years ago, they had a guest named Ross Gay on, he's a poet and essayist. And the host Krista Tippett was talking about uh, this sort of graceful, resilient joy with Ross Gay and in their conversation she said, but you know, joy is our, our capacity for joy despite and through that. And she's talking about, you know, the fact that we're all going to die and things are going wrong all the time, that joy actually joins us together. It's a, leveling in a way, she says, and Roske responds, totally, it's sort of like, uh, you know, it's joy by which the labor that will make the life that I want is possible. Uh, so it's not puzzling to me that joy is, is possible in the midst of difficulty. To talk about joy as uh, a labor, as a work, as something that we do um, even in the face of death, even in the face of difficulty, that in the midst of lockdown, joy is possible. And Jesus meets us and shows his disciples his hands and his side scarred, and they experience joy. It is exactly these scars that like authenticate Jesus to them. It's the memory of the worst experience of his in their life that gives them cause for joy in his presence. I pray that for all of us today. For some of us, this is the worst experience of our life, being apart in all of the stress and all of the things uh, that, that weigh down on us. But I pray that we're still able, 
with Christ's presence among us, where two or more are gathered, even by Zoom, that we might have license for peace and for joy. And, and when I say that we might have peace, I don't think that this is an easy peace. We remember all the Old Testament prophets are, are really critical of those who try to paper over unpeace by just saying peace, peace, where there's no peace, right? But this might be a hard fought and durable peace that is born by suffering. And that this might be a joy that becomes a labor of love on this new day of creation. The risen Jesus is working among us through pain and the memory of pain to bring about joy. Jesus is working in and through our pain, in and through suffering to bring about joy. Now this isn't quite enough for Thomas though. Thomas has one of the most unfortunate nicknames in history that is stuck. Like I think of when you were a kid uh, on the playground, you would get unfortunate nicknames. And normally that it, within a couple of years, you graduate, you get level up a grade. And normally those nicknames don't follow you. But Thomas inherits this nickname for his doubt and it sticks. And so awful. But it, it seems in Thomas that the, the same grace the other disciples have to experience immediate joy in Christ's presence doesn't quite... Uh, bring about the same sort of instant and satisfying joy in him. They were able to see and recognize and proclaim, we've seen the Lord. They seem to understand at some level that there's this objective reality that through death and into new life, Jesus is now the Lord over all creation. That in the, in the, the words of of Romans, Jesus' death and resurrection gives him this range where his, his lordship and his power extends to the highest heavens and to the deepest depths. The, the, the love of Jesus uh, goes deeper and wider and higher than we can imagine. And they seem to understand this by saying, we've seen the Lord. He's, control, he, he's in control over even death and the grave. This is the, res the same kind of recognition that happened when um, the writer of Revelation, John, uh, um, sees the risen Jesus in the beginning of the apocalypse. Revelation 1, 17 and 18 says, when I saw him, this is Jesus appearing, it says, John says, I fell like a dead man at his feet. But he put his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid, I'm the first and last and living one. I was dead, but look, now I'm alive forever and always, and I have the keys to death and the grave. It seems like uh, all of Thomas's friends were able to kind of get this in an instant, that Jesus has the keys to death and the grave, and that's a uh, cause for great joy. But Thomas needs not only to see, Thomas needs to touch. Many of us are feeling this desire towards tangibility. So many of these comments that, that I was just breezing by talk about, I miss being able to hug someone. I miss being able to be with my friends. Many of us are feeling this desire towards intimacy, towards tangibility. We miss our people and it's great to see them, but we want to experience a hug or a handshake or a touch on the elbow that communicates understanding or the sort of eye contact and active listening that we don't have high enough resolution, even in our best technologies to capture, that our technology lags when it even tries. So Thomas needs to touch Jesus. There's a, a famous image of Thomas, the incredulity of St. Thomas by Caravaggio. You can see Thomas gets up in there <laughs> he's not, not satisfied to sit back and see from a distance. Thomas needs to touch Jesus. Thomas needs to empathize. He like empathize means to share in the pain of. He needs to share in Jesus's wounds and he's going to share in them with his finger in his eyes. In Jesus 
Well, Jesus gives Thomas this grace, this gift. Jesus knows how tangible faith is and must be and doesn't chasten Thomas for it. Thomas is then able to respond with the others. But even more personally, it says that, that Thomas touches Jesus' side and his hands and his feet, these scars, these wounds, in response by saying, my Lord and my God. Not only for Thomas is Jesus the Lord, but he has through his intimacy and generosity become Thomas's Lord. Jesus welcomes our own exploration and our own questions and invites you to know him as the Lord, but also as your Lord. Maybe, maybe this time apart gives us the time and the space to continue to explore and to question, but also when it comes down to it, to know Jesus on a more intimate basis. Our reading closes with the whole purpose of this, this meeting, but the whole record, the whole scroll, it says, and that's so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's son, and that believing you will have life in his name. Friends, even in lockdown, you have been given grace and peace. Those, those are kind of sign off words for St. Paul, but um, I invite you to explore those realities that, that you've been given both grace and peace. You have been met by the risen Christ himself, maybe in sneaky, small ways. I invite you to have eyes and ears to see and to hear and to expect to meet Jesus. You have been given the gift of the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and who is resurrecting us. You have been forgiven and you have been given the strength and the courage and the trust to forgive others. This is all the good news. You're allowed to doubt and to explore and to remember both joy and pain. You can feel all these things and you can feel them in front of the God who knows how that it all feels. And you're invited to wake up once again, or maybe you're invited to wake up for the first time tomorrow to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, God's son, and that in believing, you and I might have life in his name, full, overflowing, abundant resurrection life. That's the good news. Amen. Will y'all pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this story that is wrought with fear and uncertainty and meets us in a time of fear and uncertainty and fatigue and all of these feelings. Uh, Lord, you are not a dispassionate God, but a God who knows pain and um, invites us to uh, feel your wounds. Lord, give us um, hearts that uh, feel deeply. Um, give us minds that are um, courageous and guided by the hope of faith and the ability to receive your grace. Lord, continue to enter into our lives and speak peace. Peace in all of the um, unpeaceful circumstances, whether that be family life or work life or economics or uh, loneliness, all of the things mentioned. And Lord, thanks for uh, the life that you offer us by your spirit. We give you thanks for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to keep our 
prayer going um, by inviting Nate Hood to lead us in our prayers for the people. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's join together and pray for our households and neighborhoods and our church, um, friends and enemies, our country, world. Uh, as you offer a prayer, don't forget to unmute and uh, end your prayer with Lord in your mercy and we can all pray together with you our prayer. Let's pray. Lord, I confess that I am in need of you in the midst of my own fear and my own uh, fear of my pain in my past and getting kind of my world getting kind of narrower, smaller in this time. Please come and meet me. Uh, in little ways and help me pay attention to um, how I can be generous and how I can be giving to those around me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, um, I pray for everyone who leads um, in our governments in this country, God, whether they be an executive person, a legislator, a civil servant, an expert, a non-expert, whatever capacity. God, we have so much division and contention and mistrust. God, please um, Help all our leaders to make choices wisely and courageously, not out of fear, not out of anger to get back at others, um, but out of a desire to um, foster a world in which we can flourish, God. We can have good life together, God. We can have peace um, instead of one of enmity and of suffering. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. God, in this Easter season of new life, um, we celebrate baby Elijah um, with Christine and Michael. <clears throat> we pray that uh, this will be a real time of joy and sweetness for their family to all be stuck together. Um, and yeah, we continue to pray for Elijah's health um, and Christine's health as they recover. Um, yeah, will you be with them and will your peace um, surpass any anxiety and fear in this time. Will your peace be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Thank you, Lord, for sparing my 85-year-old Aunt Joan from the uh, virus. She has recovered. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. And I ask for Katie. I lift her up and her little baby and Steve and, and to just um, give them peace, Lord, about what's to come, um, to help her fight those fears. And, um, and just bless them, Lord, and continue to grow that baby and just give them health, Lord, and well-being through all of this and help her family and friends to um, accept whatever the limits are of, of our exposure to them. And I just thank you and praise you, Lord, in these things in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, I pray that you um, be near to um, those who are grieving in our friend Nancy's family as they grieve the loss of her cousin Joshua to mm. coronavirus after uh, being sick for a couple weeks and, and struggling. Um, they are heartbroken, and you are near to those who are heartbroken. And give them a peace beyond their understanding. Lord, in your mercy. God, I pray for um, peace um, in my home and in my family. Um, just for um, emotional well-being and um, help with parenting, and um, just uh, confess that we're all under a great deal of stress, and uh, could really use peace right now. Or in your mercy. Perfect and wise teacher. Um, we pray for your protection and your justice for students everywhere of all ages as this time is contributing to already existing disparities. Um, we pray that you give students safe places to be right now um, and to open their minds to the ways they can learn from everyone and everything around them, even when um, formal school and formal class structures are changing. God, I pray that um, in the future as teachers, administrators, um, people in government, as they make decisions that affect education. God, we ask for your mercy um, to be shown through them towards students um, and for, uh, yeah, for justice um, in school systems um, and for those disparities to not be as wide as, as they, they could be. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Uh, Lord, I, I pray for our friends at the Gathering Church as they are in a season of transition um, uh, as Pastor Mark Acuff uh, has his last Sunday before his retirement next Sunday. Um, and pray a blessing on he and Libby 
um, and that you take care of them and protect them um, in this uh, strange time and uh, that you do the same with uh, the leaders and congregation over there. Um, give uh, Kurt and Ginny and um, uh, Rochella and the leadership team everything that they need um, and be with them. Uh, we give you thanks and uh, Lord in your mercy. Lord and our God, I thank you that you are with us uh, and please give us what we need so that when you're afraid, we have a lot of questions and we can't see at all what, where we're going, that we can still hope for you to meet us and to be with you and to touch you and to be close to you and to know your compassion and the end um, and your power. Thank you again for this meeting today. Um, thank you for your love uh, made evident in Easter and rising again. Amen. Before we gather around the table, if you join me as we confess together. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from the grave and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the way of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is the head of the church, his body. Amen. I invite you to gather the elements that you might have had in your pantry. This communion during uh, quarantine affords us the oppor opportunity to continue to cultivate imaginations for how God takes really ordinary things, how Jesus meets us even through locked doors uh, to be with us and to speak peace among us. We remember Christ's meal with his disciples as he gathered for a Passover feast to remember God's deliverance of God's people out of Egypt, out of systems of slavery and sin and death uh, into new life. He took the Passover bread and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. He broke it and he gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body for you. A little while later, he took the cup and likewise, he blessed it and gave it to him and said, take and drink. This is the covenant of my blood shed for you for the sins of many. So often as you drink from it, remember me and pray with me. Lord, we give you thanks for these good gifts. This bread and juice your body and blood. We enter into the mystery of how you meet us and we take up the mantle as um, believers in you and also as a chosen people and a royal priesthood, a holy nation belonging to you, our God, called out of darkness and into your marvelous light. 
Uh, Lord, help us remember well. Help us um, remember your death for us, that you've included us in, that we might die to sin, and also remember your resurrection, being raised to new life, that we uh, might turn from sin and live into the hope and peace and joy and grace of a new life. Lord, feed us at this table that we might grow and be healthy and be joined together as members of your body. Even from afar, uh, join us in unity together. We pray, uh, we pray all this in the strong, resurrected name of Jesus, the Lord and our Lord. Amen. Body and blood of Christ, broken and poured out for you. Amen. Now, friends, I invite you to go in this good news that the risen Lord Jesus is among us and you can walk in the peace that he offers to us by his spirit. That You can work in that peace and love those whom you're in proximity to in that peace that you can parent in that peace, that you can um, rejoice in that peace, that you can grieve in that peace, because this is an abundant peace that Jesus gives and makes available to us. Go as people of peace. Amen. Thanks for being together, y'all. Um, I invite y'all to stay on and connect and share uh, together. Um, be praying this week also for um, our uh, ladies who are expecting and also for the pains as they settle in. Um, it, you also received in the church email uh, an urgent uh, request for um, household goods for our friends at Jubilee Home who have shifted towards uh, being a uh, shelter for um, men who may or may not have been exposed to coronavirus. And so they need new uh, twin XL sheets, um, towels, linens, socks, and underwear that can be in the form of Walmart or Target gift cards. They're really emphasizing new. Um, some people have been really generous with uh, really gently used stuff, but they emphasize new because um, these are um, uh, linens and things that, that they're going to send with uh, these men after their uh, time at Jubilee Home is over. And, and uh, frankly, uh, everyone deserves uh, new linens. Um, and so uh, if you want to be a part of that, you can um, either by buying the goods or by sending money to the goods. I direct you to Jubilee Homes uh, website, which has info for their MoGive or their Venmo as a way to get them money, um, and also uh, contact info uh, on how to drop that those materials off if you're looking for a car ride. Uh, if you are not looking for a car ride, you can connect with me, uh, Chris at all, uh, Chris at OakDurham.org. Uh, um, and I can coordinate a pickup from you. I'll, I'll come to your porch and pick it up and deliver it to Dave and Amber at Jubilee Home. So thanks for y'all's generosity with that. Uh, peace. <laughs>